Hey guys, welcome back to the Unleashed podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger, and today we're chatting with Sarah Borg. Sarah is our executive assistant, does so much behind the scenes, runs all of our events, coordinates all the events. And we talked to her, or I talked to her, um, just about her story. As you guys know, I love to hear people's stories and unpack that. But we, uh, And we never know where these interviews are going to go. But today we talked about um, how God uses our past, how I, Sarah had an awesome quote that nothing nothing is wasted with God, that he will use things in our past to prepare us for the future. And even things that we go through that are, are painful, that he didn't author, he will grab things out of that to uh, and turn them into good, as Romans 8.28 says, and um, and make something beautiful out of the ashes in our lives. But we talk about how God wants to partner with us. She runs our intercessory team. Uh, that we have intercessory prayer teams that uh, that are a team that prays for everything that um, the Kingdom Ecosystems uh, organization is doing, and so she is ahead of that. And we talked about how just God wants to partner with us in prayer, and um, most importantly, talked about relationships. And she said something that was so awesome. I've heard before, but and I know she didn't author this, but one plus one equals four, and how we in the body of Christ need to work together. I need your gift, you need my gift. We need to partner together to accomplish these things for the Lord. And that's kind of at the heart of what Kingdom Ecosystems is doing is you have a supply, he has a supply, she has a supply. What can we do when we bring all of us together and our supplies together and our gifts and our wirings and callings together? into one place and we can solve all kinds of problems because we have Jesus with us and he is, uh, you know, gracing us to do what we're called to do. And when we, as Sarah said it today, it was so awesome. And we take this, especially when we talk about bringing business and ministry, there's fireworks and made me think of my interview with Mike Thacker uh, of Mike drop who I had on the streams of income who I need to have back on this show now to talk about just how there's a boom. Uh, he says business operating on mission. When you take business and couple it with ministry, or as I would also say, we take your calling and your calling, and your calling and put it together. There is a boom. There are things that happen when we are together that we cannot do separately. So takeaways from this, our relationships are huge. We cannot do anything alone. God didn't design us to work alone. We're supposed to be together and accomplish things together. So what is it that's on your heart? Uh, get with other people in that sphere. Talk to people. Uh, join yourself with other people uh, because together you're going to be way more powerful than you will by yourself. You're going to be able to accomplish more. Your vision, the vision and the dreams of God that God has put on your heart are going to go further and faster with other people. You are not going to be able to accomplish all that by yourself. You're going to need the help of somebody else. So just say very practically, like if you are wanting to write a book and you don't know how to get it published, find somebody that can help you publish that and get it done. There are people that do that. We actually have a friend. I, I can connect you with somebody. But um, it's it's about those connections and those relationships. And to advance the kingdom of God, need, we need to work together. That's what this episode is about. And here is my interview with Sarah. All right, Sarah, <laughs> welcome to Unleashed. So good to see you. It's good to see you too. Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. Yeah, of course. So tell us your story, what you're doing in Kingdom Ecosystem. You've been around longer than I have. Of course, you've known Eli for a long time because he married your sister. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just tell us how you got um, involved with all of this and just anything, you know, going backwards that kind of led you up to this. Sure. Yeah, well, it did start with with Eli joining our family and so grateful, you know, um, I, I love how God has wired and gifted him. I love the beauty of, of him and Hannah as a team and as our leaders of kingdom ecosystems. And, uh, I would hear kingdom ecosystems kind of in passing and uh -huh. always had to ask for some clarity, like what exactly is kingdom yes. ecosystems? What, what is he doing? And so it wasn't until I attended the Global Impact Summit at the end of 2022 and just volunteered a bit mm. that I got to see firsthand, this is Eli's passion. This is the heart. Mm. This is the anointing God's put on him to bring leaders together, to bring communities together and businesses mm -hmm. to do more for the kingdom, to come together so that, you know, one plus one is four instead yes. of two. And so... 
um, it was kind of like being in the room is where all the things were clicking mm. and being in the room to experience the kingdom. The kingdom is here. The kingdom mm-hmm. is now. It's not far away. It's not in the future. Yeah. And anyway, it was just humbling to be a part and it kind of whetted my appetite to want to know more, to experience more, to be a part of the community, even if it was volunteering occasionally or doing something kind of behind the scenes. And so yeah. that's really how I started to get connected and mm. um, so thankful. Yeah, that's awesome. At first, I, when, when he first told me about what he was doing, I it really took a minute. Like, I don't quite understand this. And, and so mm-hmm. now it's like, I told him it's like an onion that you, you unpeel. It's like, okay, now I understand. He talks a little bit more. Okay, I understand that now. Um, so I still feel like I'm that onion's being unpeeled, even though I've been hanging out with him for a couple of months now, uh, very intensely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm always learning new things when he talks. <laughs> so. Yes. Yes. Well, in the growth and acceleration that God is doing in this season, it's kind of like the onions being unpeeled, but then I think there's new layers being added at the same time. So it's really exciting to <laughs> <Right>. see <laughs> all the yeah. dynamics that play. Right. And with the the team growing, there's more onions to unpeel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I love it. It means there's more stories we get to learn about each other. That's right. I had Jake on just the other day and we're just learning about, I, there's things about him. I'm just lo- honestly just getting to know him over the last few months. And so, um, you know, like I know him pretty well, but I had him on this podcast and he, I learned a lot about his past and his story and it's really cool. So I love hearing people tell me more about like your pre K E days. Pre K E days. Well, I'll tell you my pre K K E days. Um, sort of prepared me for now, but I think that it also is such an opposite scenario because I've got corporate and nonprofit backgrounds. Mm. I've, you know, worked for a major corporation, but then I've also, I've been on staff at a church. Mm -hmm. I've helped with other nonprofit entities and um, then, you know, been a part of leadership from a volunteer standpoint on the PTA, things like that. But then Mm -hmm. coming into an environment that's so entrepreneurial yeah, and really a startup has stretched me because it's like learning how to think in a whole new way for me yes. um, and to get out of the box. And I'm still learning that daily. I'm so grateful to Eli for his leadership and his, you know, coaching in that regard, because mm-hmm. um, it's, it's kind of like you get to write write a whole new story. Um, mm-hmm. But I think in that listening to Holy Spirit really closely and not falling into the MO of this is what I've always done. Too. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Um, I love what you said, that how just some of your past experience has helped you. Do you feel like, um, and I know the answer is yes to this, that God uses our, like all these pieces, like all our whole, our past and prepares us for the future. Like you may be in a job and like, why am I here? And can you look back and like, is there any just, any position you've had that at the time you're like, I'm not sure why I'm here, but now you see why, or, um, or just, is there anything you're, that you feel like you didn't understand it then, but now it's like, Oh my gosh, that makes perfect sense. Like I know exactly why God mm-hmm. led me that way. <laughs> yeah. In hindsight, you know, they say it's 2020 and mm-hmm. I think it's the kindness of God that allows us to see how he's constantly weaving those things together. And yeah. Um, and there can be some really hard things, you know, hard interpersonal dynamics, hard work environments, hard losses. Mm. And, um, and we don't always see the, the redemptive factor or just that preparation. Um, but I'll tell you, I was working for a financial planning company and the, um, the manager of that division who I was working with was. So just it was really hard to grasp what it was he wanted and, and just kind of to get on that same wavelength. Mm. And it was it was a struggle. But I'll tell you, the next place I went, um, I was so prepared to anticipate, you know, who it was actually our senior pastor. I was on staff with him and mm. was so much better to, able to anticipate his needs or just kind of the flow of um you know, staff dynamics and his vision and, and right. being able to flow with that. But yes. uh, it was, it was hard. 
Mm. And then on a personal note, you know, um, just going through valleys or things that feel just so ugly and dark, you know, we, um, our first daughter had a chromosome issue. And so we ended up, um, she ended up being delivered at the end of the second trimester, went to heaven after a couple of breaths. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, not at all how you picture no. anything going with your first baby or even if it's not. Right. And, um, but then um, in our next couple deliveries, there were certain things about even her delivery and her birth and passing that um, prepared prepared the way for um, our next few daughters and their deliveries and different parts of that. And so wow. even in those moments, you know, the little whisper of Holy Spirit to say, hey, this nothing's wasted with me. Mm. So even if you've had to shut down a business, even if you've had to restructure, even if you've had to just lay something down completely and feel like, yes. you know, that dream or that seed is completely buried, um, mm. there's so much redemption and so much resurrection mm. that he loves to do. That's so good. This is what I'm talking about. Like I said before we hit record, I have no idea where this is going to go. Uh, and so sure. now we're talking about the <laughs> how God it wants to redeem every situation. I love that. Nothing is wasted with me. I'm just taking notes here because this is good stuff. Yes, I totally 100% agree with that. Wow. I didn't know that about your baby. I'm so sorry. My wife and I went through, had three miscarriages before Callan. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, as a woman, how rough that is. And so I just, um, mm. and I think it's something like, I, as I talk to more people, uh, you hear more stories that it, like, it, I don't think miscarriage is talked about that much, is it? It just seems like it's mm -hmm. shocked at how many people that happened to. And wow. But mm. God redeems I'm it. I'm so sorry that y'all had to walk through that. Yes. It's painful. But God is good. And we have our Callan and um, he's our miracle boy. So we are <laughs> grateful. But yeah, you're yes. right. God, he doesn't waste anything. And I feel like he's in our past preparing our future. Um, so mm -hmm. that is so good. Um, I'm going to yeah. ask you about the um, staying in this kind of the same vein. One thing you're also doing in the KE team is that you're over the prayer team. Um, I think mm. a lot of people would wonder, like, why is that important? I mean, of course, prayer is important, but you don't typically hear of organizations having a a whole department not that we call it a department necessarily, but a team dedicated to prayer mm -hmm. covering. What's the vision behind that? The the idea behind that? Of, of course, you're praying for everything. I mean, that's obvious, but um, just unpack that a little bit. Like why and should other organizations have a team dedicated to be praying for what they're doing? Mm, that's a good question. I was inspired by... And one of our partner organizations commissioned because uh, Nathan's laughter shared that they have an intercessory team. Yeah. And that just struck me um, because when he shared that we were kind of in the middle of a, a, a hard situation, a lot of well, like we were hitting walls mm -hmm. at KE. And so I just thought, Lord, first of all, you got nothing to lose. Right. right. Um, but more so, I think just the intentionality of, you know, the, everything that's happening in the spirit realm mm -hmm. is manifest in the physical realm. And so the good, the bad, the wins, the losses, all of the, the struggle, you know, is, is up here. And so if we're not going after and operating in that sphere then everything down here you know, is we're missing that element to be fully connected and whole. And so, so grateful for each member of our intercessory prayer team, because, you know, it's beautiful. Again, going back to community and relationship, you know, to celebrate the wins together and be like, wow, Lord, we prayed for this yes, and specific things. Yes. And then when it happens and, and you see the fullness of it because of the intentionality in prayer, then mm -hmm. to see the specific answers, it's just, it's powerful and it kind of fuels that fire like hey let's press in more yes not that god owes us anything but because he wants to partner with us yes. and we want to partner with him mm. because that's what all of this is for right yes. you know we're we're here for the kingdom and not for ourselves just to look good or successful or yeah um, 
type of thing. Yeah, I love that phrase that God wants to partner with. Isn't that amazing that the God of the universe wants to mm -hmm. partner with us? <laughs> it's like, and that crazy? It boggles my mind, um, but it's true. He wants. He wants to. Uh, I think doesn't I mean here's where we get a little theo theological and so um just curious your mm -hmm. thoughts on this like um do you believe he set up this whole world in such a way that um he needs our prayers he needs us to partner with him because here's what I've heard and what I've heard people say um there's some people that say God can do everything and and can we, he doesn't even need us and I understand cuz mm -hmm. he's all powerful but I believe that he set up like just the the order of the universe is that um first he gave adam and eve control here you go by sinning they lost it gave it back to the devil when jesus died and paid the price he took the keys back from the devil gave it back to man and so mm -hmm. do you um it, this just a way to think about how what why you're praying um it's it's mm -hmm. not that like you're trying to get god it's like we do have that authority that God has given us authority here on the earth. And so do you believe that God actually needs us to pray in order for things to happen here on the earth? Like do we, that authority that we're kind of partnering with him on, like here's our authority, God, that you've given us over the situation. And he actually needs those prayers and able to, to work because he's like given us, given us the authority. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know that that's, we right. could go deep and, you could probably have a whole series on this, but what are your just thoughts on, <laughs> thoughts on that? Wow. Yes, we could um, go many directions. I think the word need is the one to camp out on. God is completely whole. Yes. He's completely secure. But I think it's just the desire mm. is more what conveyed when we look at the word Mm -hmm. You know, he desires Jesus. I think about Jesus walking on earth, you know, mm -hmm. fully God, fully human. Yeah. You know, he could have chosen to do what he wanted to do by himself. And yet yeah. he picked a dozen guys and, and decided, you know, I'm gonna let these people walk with me through the mess and through the ugly. And I know that they're going to run away from me, yeah. but I'm still going to model what it looks like to, be vulnerable to be intimate to be in community and relationship with other people because none of us was designed to live in isolation i mean god is trinity right yes. and so i think the word need i would say no i don't think he yeah. needs us to uh -huh. but i i've heard that you've probably heard the analogy of you know the person that that goes on the cruise ship and they're so happy to be on there uh -huh. but they like pack pbj and they've got their little trail mix in their room and, and the whole time you know they're just kind of camping out on the cruise ship and at the very end somebody's like what are you talking about all of this was yes. available to you these right. buffets and all this you know everything was provided for yes. <laughs> excuse me and so i think yes. about that you know god has provided jesus hanging on the cross wasn't just for salvation it was for redemption it's for wholeness and so he's offering that buffet to us yeah. we get to choose if we're going to partake and how yes. full yes. life can be here yeah versus just kind of on earth you know yeah 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 you're right need may not be the right he just chooses to partner with us and mm -hmm. invites us into the journey to be able to uh you know partner partner literally partner with him do things with him um to accomplish yeah. things here on the earth wow that's good i didn't mean to go that direction just thinking about prayer and just wanted to get your thoughts on it because uh, yeah. i love how we have an intercessory prayer team uh, over this thing and yeah. I know how powerful that is because I mean I've seen seen the power of prayer in my own life and so it just blesses me to mm -hmm. know that there's people behind the scenes that are praying for everything that we're all doing yeah yeah it's it's an honor and grateful to you know get to walk with people absolutely well let's jump into the um well, you said something was so good at the beginning that j takes us into the se section about like relationships um, you said one plus one equals four. And of course I've heard that before, but just joining how, just unpack that a little bit in your own mind, like what the, the, what you said before we hit record about how we tend to be in silos and when we break those down and become vulnerable and work together that we can accomplish so much more. What does that, what does that look like for you? Hmm. Eli says something so often that 
that is the first thing that comes to mind, the unleashing the latent potential of the body of Christ. Uh-huh. And a body is many parts. Right. And I think to fully do what God has called us to each of us to do, mm-hmm. we need each other. We, yes. I, I don't have all of the things that I need to do what God has called me to do. I need other people. I need mentors. I need spiritual parents. I need yes. people to call out my blind spots. Mm-hmm. And where I've maybe kind of gone off track. And mm-hmm. so um, to do that and, and to go after that full potential um, is, it's a, it's a group effort, right? Yes. I mean, yes. um, I've, I've loved seeing in the last few months the beauty of just this beautiful mosaic that God's put together on the team, you know, in you and Jake and Chris and mm-hmm. Eli and mm-hmm. all, whoever it is that comes in different seasons, um, cause mm-hmm. seasons don't last forever. So right. whoever is a part and, and walking more closely, it's, yeah. it's beautiful and a gift to get to receive. Wow. God, that's you mm-hmm. living through Ryan. That's you living through Eli. And, and we all get to mm-hmm. partake of that, you know? Yeah. Mm, that's so good. Um, it feels like I'm mean, as I I'm mean, I'm more in the business world, but I see the ministry world. Oh, but I see them. <laughs> but it's um it's obvious to me that it seems like ministries don't play well together. And that's you said before we mm. hit record that it grieves you about that, and me too, because it seems like we could be accomplish so much more if we join forces and like, hey, we're all on the, we're all on the same team, guys. Let's let's do this together. It doesn't need it's not a competition. And I feel like like this, you know, the scarcity mentality about, like, you know, mm-hmm. this is my donor list. And if we work together, you're going to steal my donors. And, you know, I get that from a human level. But gosh, you know, God is mm-hmm. a God of abundance and uh, yeah. we need each other to accomplish this thing. I, nobody can do it on their own. So. Yes, yes. I love that you hit on the poverty mentality. Um, one of our partners um, shared a piece of wisdom that was given to him and he said, approach every conversation with a spirit of abundance. Mm. And um, I know there's a time and place to maybe go after differences. If it's something that's standing in the way of the greater goal and and Mm -hmm. of maybe being out of alignment of the word or whatever. But I think more often than not, there's so much that we we have in common that we stand together in alignment with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And one of my spiritual mentors said to me one time, we were in a season of, um, on a personal level, just trying to decide where to attend church and where to be involved. And yeah. they said, why does it have to be all or nothing? Mm-hmm. You know, why, why can't it be both? And yeah. that actually yeah. has stuck with me in this season where, um, some of our kids are plugged into a student ministry at one church because it's amazing. And then we're maybe plugged in um, on, you know, weekend services at another place just because that, that is what is working. And I've had yes. to kind of let go of, it has to be this way. Yes. And so mm. um, I think, I think in business, sometimes it flows more easily for those who haven't been in a church background because yeah. they're used to more collaboration. And so yeah. I love how Eli is bringing um, through the team that spirit of abundance and the spirit of unity for mm-hmm. kingdom collaboration. And yes. I think that was something that struck me the first time I was at the Global Impact Summit was yeah. here's business and marketplace calling and here's kingdom and here's Holy Spirit moving and you stick them together and it's like fireworks. Yes. Because. Yes, yes, yes what greater thing to do than being called in business and bringing the kingdom at the same time. I'm looking for, it doesn't have to be independent. I had a guy on my podcast um, before it was unleashed. His name is Mike Thacker. I need to have him on back, have him back on because he wrote a book called uh, Mike drop. And he talks about um, business operating on mission equals boom. And the boom that literally what you just described of when the church and the business world gets together, it is, it's like mm-hmm. fireworks because um, I mm-hmm. see and I just know that there's so many guys, um, guys and gals that are not professional ministers. Uh, I air quotes mm-hmm. guys for the user that are just listening. Feel like I am not qualified to to be a minister because I'm not on stage. I'm not, you know, a pastor. And but 
The pastors on stage are supposed to be the ones equipping us as believers to do what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. And most likely it's in the marketplace. Most of us aren't professional ministers or aren't going to be pastors uh, of churches and aren't going to go into full-time ministry, but that's okay because we can reach way more people in our own, in our job and our business than, than when, and then, then if we, you know, as a lot of people think it's, oh, it's a higher calling or it's like, you know, the pastors up here and you business people are down here. You're, you're less than, mm -hmm. and that's, and I, I think, I feel like people are starting to learn. That's not the case um, that, mm -hmm. you know, you're in, you're in the marketplace and you are valuable. We need you. And that yeah. um, it's really flipped to like the, it's not pastors up here. It should be ministry people underneath the people in the marketplace equipping us to go out and do what we are called to do, whether that's to be an accountant or a business owner or whatever, or a stay at home mom, like my wife. And, um, yeah. it, it's, it's all valuable and it's, um, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not a less than calling. And you're right. I feel like there's a lot of people that are see themselves, especially, I just think business owners that are like, you know, I don't want to be an usher. I don't want to be, I don't want to, I, I could serve in the nursery. Sure. But that's probably not the best use of my gifts. And it seems like there's a lot of people in ministry that don't get the business world. So it's like, you know, stay out of this, stay out of what we're doing because we know better. We're the, we're the church leaders and you nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like if they would come together and the ministry people would see the value and the business leaders that are in their church, how much more could we yeah. accomplish? And that's, I guess, maybe to sum it up very simply, that's kind of what we're doing in kingdom ecosystems is taking these mm. groups of people, the five pillars that Eli talks about and putting them together mm -hmm. and saying, Hey, let's, what can we accomplish together? You're doing some cool things in your own groups, but if we kind of like break down those silos and come together, what, how much more could we accomplish? Is that kind of like, does that sum up in a simple way what we're all doing here? <laughs> I think beautifully so. Well okay. said. Okay. Good. I'm always I'm learning how to like okay, this is funny. I was um uh at a, a chamber of commerce meeting uh with Eli and we were having to stand up. It was the new member orientation. And we had to stand up and and uh, introduce ourselves. We went around the whole room. So I told him that I told everybody, I, I spoke for the two of us. Hey, Ryan Rieger, I'm with Kingdom Ecosystems. We help um impact leaders create more impact. And then I said something to the effect uh, about like, you know, the dumbed down version is we uh, we're like business because to me, like it's hard to uh, if you're in a group of complete strangers, it's what does we help impact leaders create more impact mean? Like, I don't know what that means. Um, so I, I felt the need to explain it further and I completely botched it and ended up saying that, hey, we're like a business and ministry consultant. But it was just funny. So now I, I kind of insulted the whole crowd by saying, you know, to dumb it down for you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I'm trying all to say is I'm trying to figure out ways to succinctly and clearly describe what we're what we're all about here. So it kind of makes sense to somebody. Um, mm. Maybe I'll record. I think grab what I just said and, and write it out so I have a, an idea. But what's go ahead and I'll let you talk. No, I love your line of we help impact leaders create more impact. You know, that's beautiful. Yeah. And to get to this point, to be able to verbalize even that in our messaging, you know, um, I think is a huge win mm. because I certainly couldn't give the 30 second elevator version when I first, you know, came on. But yeah. I think as God continues to bring more clarity and, um, growth that we are able to convey that effectively. Yeah. What do you say to people when they say, Hey, Sarah, what do you do? And then you say, Oh, I'm, you know, whatever you say, as far as your job title with kingdom ecosystems. Okay. What's kingdom ecosystems. What do you say to that? To people who aren't, you know, in the, in the business world or just, just regular folks who will probably never, ever work with. How do you explain mm -hmm. what we do? Mm -hmm. Well, it's slightly different every time, but it basically, I say, <laughs> You know, we build community to help leaders maximize impact so that they're doing more together than apart. I love it. All right. What's that? We build community. Yeah. To help leaders maximize impact. Oh, that's good. I think I like yours better. To maximize impact. I 
think we each have a version that we need to put in the mixing bowl and just right. figure out what do we yeah. want to grab a hold of. Yeah. But it's and do they, um, when they give you like that glassy eyed look like, huh? Um, and maybe they just like, okay, that sounds nice. And you just go on from there. But for any that like want to like, Hey, what, what is that? Did, do any of you, any of them challenge you? Like, what does that mean? Um, and do you mm -hmm. have to explain further? And, and if you do, what does that, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, that always takes a little bit more time and, <laughs> but it's fun to explain. I think, um, just going deeper, you know, we, we bring, um, some clarity and structure because of the wirings and giftings that God has put in Eli and you and Jake and the whole team mm -hmm. so that people can do what they're doing on a grander scale mm. with the support that they need. Mm. That's good. That's really good. I like that a lot. Uh, Jake said at, at a local, um, well, I'll, let me tell you what, real quick what Jake said at a local meeting. He said, um, we were at the, um, oh, the recent thing at um, Dallas Theological Seminary. There was an event for, mm -hmm. I remember even the name of the event, um, a Faith, Faith at, at Work, Work. Summit. Um, and we were around with a group of guys that were, and Jake was introducing himself. And he said that we um, create communities around problems um essentially i'm gonna butcher this up but essentially the the gist was we create communities around problems to solve those problems better um and so mm. i like it kind of goes along what you said build community he started he he led with community just like you did um when somebody I, so i always i mean the, my go-to phrase is we help impact leaders create more impact but that feels a little bit more nebulous not sure what that means i like build community to help leaders maximize impact that it gives them a little bit better of a picture um and they could potentially walk away from that and then have a little inkling of what what all we're doing but when they go ask mm -hmm. further it's it's more like um it's more like what jake says where we we build communities of people and uh and just we just feel like that everybody works it's better together and that these problems that we're solving mm -hmm. need everybody's input. And so I say something like that, that right. it's, um, that it, we, we can't solve these things with just, you know, with this one silo, we need, like, we need the five pillars. We need the people from government and we need people in education to come together and to truly solve it because they bring in perspective, uh, that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And they, especially if they're believers, they bring something of Jesus in them that we don't have without their supply. And so it's fun just yeah. unpack thinking about the body of Christ and how, you know, the hand does need the foot. Um, and it's like, we can't, you can't walk like people that get their, you know, a big toe amputated make, that's not a big deal. That is a big deal. <laughs> like, yeah. It totally messes <laughs> up how they walk. And so it's like, we need every little part so it's so yeah. good. I love that picture. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know, the heart of it is relationship. I think mm. um, whether it's in business or ministry, people have experienced hurt. They've experienced wounding. I mean, we're, we're wounded in community, so we have to heal in community. And I think that, again, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable um, but maybe secure enough or enough trust built where, hey, when we have bumps in the road, mm. interpersonal clashes, we're going to work through it Yeah, because we, we do have the same vision. We're working, yes. on, we're on the same team, like you said a minute ago. And, and so um, building that trust is so mm. huge. You know, we're not a, a, a sales organization. We are mm. for the kingdom and we're for people. And so at the end of the day, you know, have we honored God in, in our relationships mm. more than have we gone after a certain number or a certain yeah. outcome, you know? Yeah. And now I get it when, um, when Eli said he doesn't do any marketing, uh, it, he doesn't have to. And I, and I'd, fact, I'd probably push back a little bit. Like he, every single time he's with somebody, I mean, that is marketing. He's building trust with people. And, and so mm -hmm. like the fruit that we're starting to see now is from him and you and Hannah, two years. It's not like this just came up out of the blue and, you know, these people now we're working with, it just all popped up and found him. And, um, 
And so yeah. he's invested two years in sown seeds. You all have for that amount of time building that trust to a point now where we're working with folks. And that's why he's got, you know, a line of people at the door waiting to be helped. Um, it's yeah. because he's built that trust over that period of time. But it's not typical marketing, like, you know, Facebook ads and and all the stuff that I've done in my business. Like, it's just, it's different. Um, I'd say it's what he's mm -hmm. doing is way better because it's it's relational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just, I want to honor both him and Hannah because they've been so faithful and they've said yes when it costs something. And um, just that faithfulness and obedience is, it is, it's bearing fruit. And I'm so grateful for their example as leaders. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any, well, when you, when I first asked you about um, what you wanted to talk about and you said relationships, is there anything else about relationships we didn't touch on or you feel like is relevant to what we're talking about? Hmm. Well, we're really excited because we've got our September 12th event coming up mm -hmm. and the theme is scaling deep for sustainable kingdom impact. Mm. And focusing on kingdom collaboration, depth and breadth of relationships, and then measuring uh, growth and impact. And I think the relationship part is is the root of all the other things because, again, yes. we all want to be seen and known. And so I'm really excited for our September 12th event so we can dig into those workshops of how do we how do we truly go deeper in a relationship and um, it, from a healthy Approach. And then yes. the fruit that pops up from that. And what are, um, you know, what are some things that might prevent us from, from doing that? How do we overcome some barriers and obstacles in um, building deeper, healthy relationships? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, kingdom collaboration and measuring yes. growth impact on top of that. And so I think it's going to be really, really rich. Yes. And thanks for mentioning that, guys. I'll have a link in the show notes to sign up for that for those that are interested. But mm -hmm. Sarah, thank you so much. If you... Um, ever have an idea for another episode or just something that pops into your heart that you want to share, just let me know and we'll have you back on. Very much appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ryan. It's an honor to be with you. I'm grateful for you. You too.